Okay, so I want to introduce you to the key concepts, the disciplines that you're going to be studying. One is philosophy and the other is theology. Philosophy is really using language and logic, argumentation to work out what the truth of any matter is. Those matters tend to be non-scientific in nature nowadays. We'll talk more about that in a minute. The other is theology. I want you to conceptualise theology, to think of theology as a kind of historical and literary academic discipline. It's really the study of religious thought, looking at whether it is self-consistent and so on. Let's... Uh, Let's uh, let's approach this in two ways. We're going to look at the methods. We're going to look at the, some examples. The methods will give us a broad idea of what the case is, what the discipline is, and the examples will give us some specific um, illustrations. So let's start with philosophy. Do you like my uh, my Greek temple here um, against the blue backdrop? I knew you would. Um, so uh, let's start with the key idea of philosophy. So I'm just going to put this in my key idea uh, colour. Yes, I have a key idea colour. The idea of philosophy is to use logic. Logic being this kind of rational thinking, this ability to uh, apply reason, a bit like in maths, but with other ideas, uh, to work out truth. Now, modern philosophy often involves uh, more the meaning of language, but broadly, for the stuff we're studying, using logic to work out truth is about as accurate as I can get it. There are loads of kind of issues here, big questions to be asked. Let me um, let me draw a box, my box, box, my uh, box, a little kind of questions box. Um, what are the kind of questions that uh, philosophy asks? Well, when philosophy started, at least Western philosophy back here in ancient Greece, the questions were everything. Everything from uh, what's the meaning and purpose of life to does the earth orbit the sun? Is the earth round? Aristotle showed us that it was. Some of those are kind of scientific, aren't they? And, and those that are scientific now are called science instead of natural philosophy. The, the reason they've gone into science is because they can be tested. The ones that are left are things that I think are really important, but are not ones that can be tested. Now, I'm going to draw half a box here on another topic, um, just in case uh, I realise that the thing I'm writing doesn't fit, which it doesn't. Look at that forward planning. So the first one might be something like, does God exist? It's a really quite fundamental question, isn't it? If the answer is yes, then we might have to change the ways that we live. If the answer is no, similarly, we might need to re-examine the purpose of life. Here's another question for you. Do we have a soul? I'm, I'm going without the box straight away. Do we have a soul? Um, now, in philosophy, this is called philosophy of mind. Uh, philosophy of mind is really the question of how do we explain uh, what we call subjective conscious experience, our experience of the world, that 4D cinema you have in your head. How do we explain that in brain terms? But one answer is that we don't, that actually you have a soul, you have an immaterial mind. Here's a final question. What is good? When you study the ethics part of your course, oh, I've put the, uh, the question mark in the wrong place, haven't I? I've done this thing with question marks. Um, when you study the ethics part of your course, you're going to be asking a lot about what is good, what does good mean, and when is good, and when is not good? Um, those questions made sense. Um, that's philosophy too. So let me just uh, pause for a minute and look at a few examples here. So, example number one. Plato. Plato, you can see here, the old man pointing at the sky. Uh, Plato 
thought that we gain knowledge in a really interesting way. He thought that we gain knowledge through reason alone. So all knowledge, he thought, was gained uh, just by thinking. Uh, and we can understand what he... Uh, kind of cause universals, these abstract concepts, just by thinking about them. Um, he also thought that the thing that does that thinking is your immaterial soul. So he thought that we do have a soul. Now, here's where things may seem a bit different from other academic disciplines because I'm going to introduce Aristotle, and suddenly we're going to see that, unlike in many other things, we want to examine people who radically disagree with each other, and there's no better example than Aristotle and Plato. Aristotle, by the way, was Plato's student. These are both um, uh, little cutouts from Raphael's The School of Athens, um, and they're stood next to each other walking along, disagreeing. For instance, Aristotle thought that we gain knowledge primarily through experience, not through just thinking about it. And that is a radically different way of looking at it. Look at those uh, paintings for a second, actually. You can see here Plato's pointing upwards. Can you see that? He's pointing towards the heavens, the realm of the forms where thoughts exist. Whereas Aristotle here, he's pointing outwards to the world because he thought that we gain knowledge through experiencing the world, experimenting. Coincidentally, invented uh, pretty much the study of biology. Um, okay. He also thought that we don't have a soul in the traditional way, but rather, life as we understand it is nothing magical. It's just the behaviour of matter. The only difference between the screen you're watching this on and me is that I behave in a lifelike way. Well... Now we're going to move on for a second. That's, that just gives you an idea of, of the nature of philosophy and some of the questions we're going to ask. We're going to move on now to theology. I want to just make this point, though. They are very, very similar. In fact, I would say that a lot of the thoughts in philosophy have kind of moved on to become thoughts in philosophy, in theology. You see, ancient Greece didn't last forever. The golden age of reason that Plato and Aristotle represent did end, and something else took its place. After the Roman Empire came Catholic Christianity. And with Catholic Christianity, a sense of... God being the source of all knowledge instead. But these kind of, uh, these, these thinkers, uh, Plato and Aristotle and other ancient Greeks, weren't forgotten. They were instead translated into Christian thought. So theology is really kind of uh, the Christian response to philosophy plus the study of the Bible. And that is how, by the way, Plato and Aristotle have travelled to us in our much more secular age through the Christian church. So it's interesting in terms of historical focus to see how one kind of goes from this over here, from philosophy, from these uh, kind of humanists, uh, down to theology over here. And then on from theology into a modern era. Let's start now with the key idea in theology 
back to my key idea color. You'll remember my key idea color. Um, it is, in my view, the historical study historical study, so looking at it in terms of a historical development of religious beliefs. Now, you may be sat there thinking, I'm not religious, why would I care? Well, I think you ought to care, because the whole world has historically been kind of borne along by theology through philosophy to theology to a modern secular understanding you may also be sat there thinking well i you know i i am religious um what what am i going to learn here well you're going to learn kind of the the rationale behind the different beliefs um in your religion let's look at some of the questions to give us an idea uh, uh of what's going on so, here are a few of the questions. I very boldly just drew the box without knowing how much space I had. Oh, look at that. I know. Remarkable. Um, you know, so it might be something like, and I, I, I'm going to use Christians here uh, as the example because we've got a church. Um, it might be something like, how do... Christians view God. What what did what does he seem like? What what are his um, desires for humanity? What are his intentions? These sorts of things um, are one of the big questions in theology. And the sources we have for that are thinkers who drew on, on philosophers and also, uh, in this example, the Bible. Here's another question. Oh, look at me boldly drawing the box again. I'm just going to draw a little bit more. Um, how do Christians not just view um, uh, God, but also... view humans so how do they see a human relationship with god what should the human response be what are the different kinds of responses that they offer these are all very interesting questions i just want to very quickly look at two theologians um the first one's augustine now Augustine, he um, he drew very much on Plato. Uh, so he was a follower of Plato and, and took a lot of Plato's ideas and just turned them into Christian ideas. Uh, but he also thought, unlike Plato, uh, that humans are fundamentally sinful. Uh, because we are born with original sin. A Christian concept, a mixing together here of Plato and Christianity. Another example might be Aquinas, um, almost a thousand years later than Augustine, by the way, although the pictures don't indicate that. Um, he was very much a follower of Aristotle. So you see that debate about the origin uh, of knowledge uh, kind of coming through here in two of the historically greatest theologians. One follows Plato and one follows Aristotle. Um, but he also thought that we could use reason and by reason he means here kind of practical reason uh, viewing the world to, uh, to work out right from what wrong. So I'm going to put good in there like that. So this is really the study of uh, the, the kind of course uh, that you've got ahead of you. Philosophy uses logic to work out truth. And theology is the historical um, 
academic study of religious beliefs.